Let's talk about why the HIPAA police woke up and what happened as a result of that. First of all, there really isn't a HIPAA police department, but the United States Department of Health and Human Services, we'll refer to that as HHS, has a department called the Office of Civil Rights, and that's the department that enforces the civil violations of HIPAA. The U.S. Justice Department enforces the criminal violations of HIPAA. So HHS, the Department of Health and Human Services, from 2005 until 2010, really didn't do much to enforce HIPAA. And this became apparent when the Inspector General's Office of HHS sent a report out, which was read by Congress and made public, that said that their organization, the department, was not doing enough to enforce the HIPAA regulations. In 2009, the High Tech Act funded HIPAA audits and also increased enforcement. So the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, formed the Office of Civil Rights and hired a former federal prosecutor to run it. The High Tech Act said that HHS got to keep any fines that it levied. So the carrot was that it got to keep the fines, and the stick was that their Inspector General's office was saying they weren't doing enough to enforce HIPAA, which could have affected the funding had Congress reacted negatively to that report. So there was a carrot and a stick approach, which is why HHS decided they were going to enforce HIPAA. So in 2012, in the early part of the year, a five-doctor practice in Phoenix, Arizona was fined $100,000 for using an online calendar system to schedule patient appointments. They included the patient's name and the treatment that the patient was going to get, and this calendar was publicly accessible. There was an investigation, and it was proven what happened, and they were hit with a $100,000 fine, not just for using the calendar, but because the Department of Health and Human Services said that the practice had a willful neglect of HIPAA because they should have complied with the HIPAA regulations seven years earlier. In July of this year, of 2012, the Alaska Department of Health and Social Services was fined $1.7 million after a hard drive was lost. This hard drive had a backup file on it. One of their techs had backed up a server onto the hard drive, was taking the drive off site, which he's supposed to do because you don't want to keep your backed up data in the same location as your original data, just in case the building burns down. But the drive was stolen from his car. They weren't even sure that there were patient records on it, but the department alerted the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services that they may have had a breach. HHS, through the Office of Civil Rights, came in and investigated and found that, yes, the loss had occurred and that the Department of Health and Social Services in Alaska had not complied with HIPAA the way it should have done from 2005 forward. So they were hit with a $1.7 million fine because they were, again, willfully negligent. Then, in September, the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary, which is part of Harvard Medical School, had had a doctor go to Korea to speak at a conference on a clinical trial that he was managing. His laptop was stolen. Again, there was an investigation, and again, there was a finding, not just that the event had occurred, but HHS said that it was caused by the willful neglect of the HIPAA regulations, that the hospital knew they should have complied, but they had not implemented the policies and the procedures and the end user training and the practices to help to, to make sure that that type of loss was avoided at all costs. So they paid one and a half million dollars. So we went from really no enforcement of the HIPAA security rule and then in 2012, a $100,000 fine for a five-doctor practice. That surprised a lot of people because people in the healthcare industry did not think that the federal government would go after a small medical practice. Then there was a fine of $1.7 million against the Health and, Human, or Health and Social Services Department in Alaska. That surprised a lot of people because they did not think that a government agency, in this case the federal government, would have such a violation against another government agency. They thought there would be professional courtesy between government agencies, and we found out that that wasn't the case. One interesting thing in Alaska was that the chief security officer was interviewed and said that they had started 
the encryption program to protect data on portable devices and they simply had not gotten to that hard drive yet. So his message was you should be doing the things and if you find out you're not doing something, get it done expediently because in his case the $1.7 million fine was a lot more expensive than if he had accelerated their encryption program. So there you have it that the enforcement with HIPAA had not been taking place from about 2005 until 2012 and after seven years, enforcement has increased and it looks like it's going to continue to increase over the next several years. This is Mike Semmel. Thanks for learning about HIPAA.